Welcome to the String Theory of the Unexplained. I'm your host, John Ventry. Our co-host is Fred Saluga. Today's guests are James Krug, Jason Geitz, and we will be discussing time travel. Welcome to the episode. So this session we're going to talk about time travel and people that say I don't believe in time travel are wrong. Time travel is definitely possible. Albert Einstein proved it through special relativity. The big debate is what type of time travel is possible. So Einstein comes up with two major theories. He comes up with special relativity and general relativity. And the Cliff's Notes version is in special relativity he's able to prove that light is basically a speed limit of the universe. And the closer and closer you go to light the more and more time slows down. So if you can go very close to the speed of light, time will slow down enough for you, relative to everybody back on Earth, that you would basically go into the future. The only problem is, as humans, we can't do this yet. So the speed of light is about 186,000 miles a second. The fastest things we've ever made as humans, the fastest physical things, are the Voyager space probes. They go about 70 miles a second. So we're not close yet. But that's one type, and it proves that someday we could be able to travel into the future. And I, just to Please. kind of piggyback on it, too, is it was uh, mathematically shown, but it was also actually tested in the 70s with uh, the SR-71 Blackbird. They put atomic clocks. They set it, like, one on the SR-71, one on the base. They started on time, and it exactly whenever it took off, and it flew at extremely high speed, like Mach 3 points, whatever. It came back, and the clocks were off by just, I mean, obviously not near the speed of light, but they were off, like, <laughs> enough that Einstein knew what he was talking about. Like, this is actually the case as you go faster and faster and faster, time starts to slow down a little bit. So. They've also proven that in particle accelerators. Yeah, part they, yeah, they can see how fast an atom will decay, a radioactive one. And if they send it near the speed of light, it decays slower than it should. So it's been proven we just can't send a human that fast. Now, the really interesting part is general relativity. So in general relativity, Einstein is able to prove that real big masses, like our planet or like the sun, will actually warp the fabric of outer space around them. So if you can warp the fabric, this allows for the possibility of wormholes and really exotic propulsion. Like, for example, when some people describe how they see UFOs moving in the sky, they basically say, I don't think that's possible because if a human were on board, this kind of motion would just kill the right. human. But I think to myself, if you've got a ship and the ship is here and it wants to get to here, if it temporarily warps space-time and then jumps across and releases to an outside observer, it looks like it went back and forth, yeah. that it just did that. So, long story short, some people think we have this technology today. You remember the, the, uh, the, uh, the Bucks County case? No, no, no. There was Denise, but then there was Cliff, right. the guy who saw the six-sided craft. When he described the single one flying, he said it was skipping through space. Like, mm -hmm. almost like you took a reel of film and just cut out, mm -hmm. you know, three or four frames, and it just it just skipped across space, almost like it's moving through time, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly, so we might have it. Now, here is the real issue. Traveling to the future, not an issue, at least as far as physicists go. The issue comes with traveling to the past, and you have what's called the grandfather paradox. Mm -hmm. So paradox doesn't mean it can't happen, but it's a little bit of a scientific dilemma. So let's say that you could go back in time before your grandfather and grandmother had your mom and dad, who eventually came together to have you. And if you killed your grandfather, or sometimes it's called the grandmother paradox, mm. if you killed them before they had one of your parents who would then have you, then you would cease to exist. But if you cease to exist, then who just capped your grandfather? Yeah. So that's where they grapple with going back in time. So for this... They, I, oh, I, please. Think, I think it creates an alternate, I think you can do it, but it creates an alternate, alternative reality where now you, you have this version, that version, you could have hundreds of versions. You can't change our future, but you just created a new one that you're no longer in or something, you know? Like that Sliders, I think, was a show years mm, ago. I remember that show. Yeah. And, uh, and then Timeless is another yeah. one that's on CBS right now. It's a great show on CBS uh, uh, with a time travel. Okay, movie. talking about Pilates again. Okay, mm -hmm. now, the kid walks around a corner and he vanishes. Who's to say that the aliens, they can actually stop time? And for us, it may be 10 seconds. For them, it's five minutes. 
Could have been. They take the kid and they snap their fingers again, and here we are. We don't even know we stopped. Yeah, yeah. That's like even kids going. creation when they yeah. say God created in six yeah. days. Yeah. Well, a day could be a century. Yeah. You know, and then others say no, it was a physical day with the sun. Who knows what it is? You know? well, well, it, with your idea of parallel timelines and parallel yeah. worlds, just going back to actual, you know, some people say well, that's preposterous, right? but the science actually when it, with the particle accelerators. They notice certain particles will disappear and then come back, and mm -hmm. they they yeah. had to go somewhere. So, like the idea of parallel dimensions and parallel worlds is becoming more and more scientifically valid as opposed to what it was like yeah. 50 years ago. It was just yeah. like a science. Fiction I think that's thing. what happens. Mm -hmm. Like you don't disappear, but another another line uh -huh. starts. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, it's funny you bring up that theory about slowing down time or something. Do you guys remember when we had David Jacobs present at the Erie yeah. Conference? Yeah. So is he Harvard or Princeton? He's one of the Ivy League um, schools. Temple. Temple. Is oh, was he Temple? Temple. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And so he had done decades worth of research on abductions. Right. And so I actually asked him when we were at dinner, I said, I said, Dr. Jacobs, do you think there's a chance that the reason people aren't seeing these abductions is because they're basically happening in a split second? So they're stretching out time, mm -hmm. then they're putting it back. And I was surprised. He was very dead set against that. He said... He really believes they're happening in our time. So if somebody goes through regression hypnosis and they said their encounter lasted two hours, when he interviewed friends and family that were looking for that person, they said, yeah, they were gone about two hours. So he disagreed with that, but I really like that. Yeah, well, his views are totally opposite of Kathy Martin's. Yeah. And I agree with Jacobs, because no, no. he has a more sinister view yeah. that they're not here to help. Mm -hmm. And I agree with him, because mm -hmm. I, I think, again, like... like the people who say the aliens are here to help, that's thats that facade and the cover-up. I mm -hmm. just don't think they are. Forget it. Well, I really like the many worlds idea. That was one of the ideas I was going to bring up. Here's the only crazy issue with that. Physicists tell us if that's real, anytime any decision is made on Earth, a new world line would branch off. Like, Fred, like, is wearing a gray UFO t-shirt. <clears throat> Fred, did you even think for a split second about wearing a different t-shirt before you picked that one? Maybe one that matches your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tough crowd, wow. <laughs> Lucky we're all yeah. <laughs> But according to physicists, if Fred even thought for that about a moment, then there would be a separate, separate world where, where everything is too. the same, but yeah, Fred's well, wearing a different t-shirt. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I like it. I think it's a good choice. <laughs> now, the other theory, John, you brought up many worlds, but the other theory around that is what's called timescape, which I just think of as anti-free will. So physicists in this theory say you could go back in time, but only as an observer. Yeah. So you could go back to Dealey Plaza in 63 to watch the Kennedy assassination unfold, okay. but the second that you try to stop the Umbrella Man or engage the shooter mm -hmm. on the grassy knoll, there is some cosmic force that prevents you from doing it, because then that. that would create more contradictions yeah, to the possible. future. Yeah. So. One interesting thing is the movies, whenever they show, whether it's Back to the Future or what, they aren't showing either one. They're showing a third version that only Hollywood shows, which is basically you go back in time, and then things you do back then then affect our present. But not to get into the Mandela effect, but some people think that's actually what's happening today, is people are going back and they're re-engineering our own timeline so that's why so many people today are collectively misremembering something the same way. Oh, is way that what the Mandela effect is? Because it's changing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't know what that was. That's one twist of it. Okay. Yeah. So nothing to do with Nelson. Yeah. Well, the reason, oh. reason, reason oh. it's called the, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the reason it's called the Mandela effect. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah. I'm just yeah. joking. No, no, no. No, it is. <laughs> the yeah, reason it's called the Mandela effect is the late, one of the ladies that was the first to put it out kind of on the internet, whenever he passed away, was it, 2013, it was 2013, you know, whenever Nelson Mandela passed away, she was like, well, man, he passed away in the early 90s. And she started talking to people who claimed they remembered Nelson Mandela passing away okay. in the early 90s. So you would have two recollections yeah. of, of yep. a certain event. Yeah, and, and that's, that's how it became known as the Mandela effect. I got it. Okay, very good. And interesting, just I mean, with the, going back to the parallel you know, universes and whatever, one of the big things with the CERN project was that you know, people were really worried that CERN was going to create a mini black hole, destroy mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. or whatever. Interesting coincidence or whatever, CERN went fully online in 2013, and that's when all these reports of... Oh, well, I never thought of that. Effect, oh, that's crazy. Kind of okay. since, yeah. since it went fully online, which is... Do you yeah. know that the guy at CERN was actually the one who created the, the web, WWW, and initially it all passed through 
through this guy and his. And whether it was CERN back then or not, huh. he created it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, look it up. He, he actually it was created there in, was that Switzerland? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was there. It might not have been called CERN, but it was that guy. That's interesting. I didn't know oh, that. that's wild. And he was controlling it initially, and then mm -hmm. and he wanted it to be free for everyone. Yeah. CERN is weird, though, because oh, yeah. there's, I guess, employees there have done it just to get a rise out of people, but they have videotaped pagan ceremonies there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then on top of that, Right outside CERN, there's a huge statue Shiva. of Shiva, Shiva, the Indian yeah. goddess of destruction, yeah. which they claim just came as a gift from India. But if you have like a high energy particle accelerator, probably not the best goddess <laughs> statue to put right outside. And it's built, that location during the Roman Empire was, um, uh, it was the, uh, a statue was there of Apollyon. Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah, and that, that Apollyon, that, that was considered, I think, like the god of like the underworld, like Horus, let's say. Wow. So, so there's been an occult connection to CERN uh -huh. in, in a number of different ways. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a twist on time travel, crop circles. And I didn't think about this, but a couple years ago, we heard Linda Morton Howe present, and she obviously has a lot of government connections, and she brought up crop circles. And what she said, I'd never really thought of. She said she has connections in intelligence agencies that said... They, their working theory is crop circles are not extraterrestrials, but that they are actually future humans coming back to try to warn us about things mm -hmm. to change the course of our civilization. She said, not only do intelligence agencies try to interpret everyone that's made, but they try to keep a running catalog of the order in which crop circles appear around the world because they also think there is something significant to their progression that the order they're appearing in. Mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the things, though, too, with Linda is they've used her in the past mm -hmm. for, for disinformation because she's quick to buy into it. So, so some of it is good, and then some of it also is that's how they get it out there, too. You know? Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Have you guys seen anything online about supposed time travelers caught in photographs? Yeah. yeah. I've seen yeah. Okay. That's I have a cool. couple. I have a couple sure. visuals. Sure. Um, have you guys seen the picture of the time traveling hipster? Yes, I, I, okay. have, I have the picture yeah. right yeah. here. If yeah. you, yeah. you yeah. do want to see right it, yeah. yeah. So this is um, the opening of a bridge in the 1940s in British Columbia. We have this guy. He looks totally out of place. He looks oh. like a hipster wearing modern sunglasses, a screen print t-shirt, and it looks like he even has a modern camera in his hands. Mm -hmm. Now, what's fascinating about this is a lot of times these pictures of out-of-place time travelers, they actually are wearing things that people assume they did not have at that time, but they actually did. Mm -hmm. So people went back and they found evidence of these wraparound sunglasses, and they think what looked like a screen print t-shirt was the top of an M from the Montreal Maroons, who was actually an NHL team at the time. And they even had small cameras like this. This was the Kodak Vigilant Junior 620 that they actually did have. So I have a number of pictures of different seeming time travelers. Yeah, but let's run through them quick so the sure. public can see. This one is Charlie, Charlie Chaplin's The Circus. So mm -hmm. in a silent film from 28, yeah, I remember they're that. showing it, and then a person's walking down the street, and it looks like they're clearly talking on a cell phone. Yep. And skeptics said this may have been an early hearing aid. And we do have another case of this happening. This is a video of women walking out from a lunch break, and one of them clearly looks like they're on a cell phone. And this was 1938. And later, the woman's granddaughter came forward and said, my mom was actually testing out cell phone technology in its infancy and another person had the matching phone but it was just off camera so not much different than a walkie-talkie so one of my issues is if you could go back in time and use a cell phone how would it actually Be work talk, yeah, you wouldn't have, have, have the infrastructure talking, for yeah, it yeah. well you're, you're, hitting, you're hitting the alien satellite yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh just one funny one to put up this was from backwoods country magazine in 1997 this is, do you know about this he one? He subscribes to that. He subscribed to this. <laughs> so the ad read, wanted somebody to go back in time with me. This is not a joke. P.O. Box 322. Isn't 322 with the skull and bones? I think so. Yeah, that oh, is. that's weird. It is. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Oakview, California, 93022. You'll get, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get paid after we get back. Must bring your own weapons. Safety not guaranteed. I have done this only once before. And I guess they made a spin-off movie called Safety Not Guaranteed yeah. from it. You do have to be careful with these. Not that I'm more skeptical on time travel than other things, but you can see some of these pictures. These have surfaced online. 
I have one here of Marilyn Monroe with a groupie in the background with an iPhone. And I have one with Elvis and the Beatles and civil rights ask activist Rosa Parks. But there's a Hungarian photographer named Flora Borsi who's just very good at photoshopping herself into one. So mm -hmm. you do have to be careful on out-of-place time travelers. But there are some interesting ones. Jay, do you have any, any uh, historical things on time travelers or anything like that? Because I got one good picture of one here that people can't explain. Uh, I think you hit the ones that I usually think about. Like I, I share with my class. So yeah, I think okay. you've hit all the ones that I share with the class. But... This was a neat one if you guys can see it or the viewers at home can see it. This was ancient laptops. Officially, these are just books. But they open up this way like a laptop would. And one of the Greeks in the one piece of pottery looks like he's using a stylus. And there's even holes in the side of it, like where you would put USB ports today. Hmm. And so it, it's just kind of neat to see some of these things. And what's the chances, place? even if it was a tablet, it, it's got to be on a hinge to open. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's not going to happen. Right, right, right. I agree. I mean, the tablet meaning a, a cuneiform, uh, you yeah. know? Sure. Hmm. Unfortunately, some of these have been proven to be hoaxes. Do, do any of you guys know anything about Billy Meyer? Yeah, I know about Meyer. Yeah. 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 Can you give us the background on Billy? Well, there's a, did we do the episode on Meyer, or it's, it's coming up? Billy Meyer, the, the main thing with him was he says he was in connection with this Pleiadian. Her name was Sem Jace, mm -hmm. okay? And, and he produced photos. Some have been disproven, but a lot of them have never been disproven. Real of UFOs and different things. But the one thing with him that catches my attention, because I look at a lot of this through a different set of eyes now, because of the paranormal activity, I look at it, it could it be demonic activity. This guy, this Sam Jace woman, if you look it up, is, is considered a high-level fallen angel. They said like one of the second most powerful. Mm. And, and she also made contact with Brad Steiger, who mm. said he wrote 175 books. Oh. And, and these people then, they go from being religious to being anti-religious. But he had one, he was at a party where he... Uh, it was a New Year's Eve party, and he started to demonstrate some of his abilities. He would make, you know, uh, spoons just dance across and land in his hand. He would take it and melt it in, in like 1,300 degrees and melt them. Yeah, I mean, wow. if we haven't done the episode, we're going to do the episode no, on no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. But yeah. It's, I know a lot about him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, some of his photographs have been caught hoaxes. So he had photographs of supposedly going back to the Mesozoic era mm -hmm. with these extraterrestrials and seeing dinosaurs. And they were able to actually find those illustrations in a book mm -hmm. called Life Before Man. He even had pictures of supposed Pleiadian women named Ascot and Nera. And later they found out they were just photographs of singers from the Dean Martin show. But it's tough, too, because this guy had no high school education. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about really high-end mm -hmm. stuff like zero-point energy yeah. decades before it was actually discovered. John, do we have time for a couple other fun ones? Yeah, you know, and I'm even thinking, show that Mandela stuff because I didn't realize what it was. And show where you have the, the two pictures. We'll run okay. through that even if it's quick. All right. I got one good one on time travel. If you could go back, or if you could go forward in time and actually see what sports teams were going to win different events, and then came back and said, hey, I'm from the future, this is going to happen, I think people would take it very seriously. And we have one case about this. Now, this was reported in the Weekly World News, but this was a time traveler in 2003 named Andrew Carlison. He supposedly came back in time and had only $800 in his pocket, and he turned that into $350,000 within two weeks. Wow. And he was supposedly busted for insider trading, and then he just disappeared. <laughs> so most people think that one's a legend. One that's not, though, there was a high school student from Chicago. This was late 90s. His name was Michael Lee. And in the caption below his name, you know how sometimes seniors can like write their own personal mm -hmm. note? He writes, Chicago Cubs 2016 World Champions, you heard it here first. Now, keep in mind, he says this while the Cubs are mired in one of the biggest losing yeah. Yeah. stretches in all professional sports history. And after the Cubs did win it in 2016, they went and found Michael Lee, and people assumed that he just kind of winged it and threw an, a number out there. But he said no. He said he recalled in the late 90s having a very vivid dream, and he's at Wrigley Field. It's nighttime, 
People are going crazy, and he sees the Cubs out on the field, and then flashing on the scoreboard is Chicago Cubs 2016 World Champs. So he saw the future. So, yeah. I mean, that's basically the premise of Back to the Future 2. Marty McFly's nemesis, yeah. Biff, goes <clears throat> forward in time and brings back a sports almanac yeah. from old Biff. But long story short, I feel like if somebody came back in time and was able to give all these sports teams that were going to win, I think people in Las Vegas would take time travel very well, seriously. They just legalized sports betting mm -hmm. here in Pennsylvania uh, yeah. and across yeah. the country. We'd be yeah. talking about so now, being assassinated. Now you can't yeah. get in trouble for it. Yeah. So before you move on, let's ask, just ask a question. If you could go back in time, where would you go? What would you, If you could go to one place to see one thing or person, what would you do? You had one, ch one chance. See Jesus raise Nazareth. Okay, where would you go? Either Kennedy assassination, try to stop that, or go back to try to keep the library at Alexandria from being burned down, because I read when that happened, it set human civilization back like 2,000 years. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, I see. You guys have all these very deep ones. Mm -hmm. I'd love to go I back. I already told them the uh, question. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell <laughs> you. No. I, I, would, I would like to go back and see, uh, like, you know, some, any of the great baseball players play. Like, see Babe Ruth, watch a game actually watch Babe Ruth play or watch mm -hmm. you know, one of those. Uh, see, I, I just saw in Ripley's Believe It or Not in the Sunday mm -hmm. paper, when he played Babe Ruth, he would put a um, cabbage plant like it was in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. He'd put it in his hat and that's how he kept himself cool when he was playing oh, the game. Really? It, it kept cool for a while. Oh. But I've always th actually thought about this. There's two things I would want to say. One, I'd want to go back and see a real dinosaur, a T-Rex, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to show up and see it. And I would go back to see Jesus also. And, you know, and if well, I couldn't communicate properly, well, he could. <laughs> yeah. he could talk back. But I just want to meet him and, and, and even ask him a question or two. Mm -hmm. Those were the ones I, I'd I, want to but see. But I think that would be cool seeing Dave bopping up the road. And the, the sister saying, you know, Lazarus died. He said, don't yeah. worry about it. Or carrying the cross yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean to even be there. Because yeah, they, they said when it. he finally died, and he said, <laughs> it's funny, when he said on the cross that it's, it's over, it didn't, he didn't mean his life. You know, what he meant was it, the reign of Satan was mm. over as far as mm. openly mm. doing the things he could do because <laughs> he died to really mm. reel right. Satan in and, and to help us. But... You know, then there was an earthquake, and there was. I would. That's what I want. Want to see. It would but be. But he fun. might. I would. I might go, and he might look at me and go, <laughs> "You're not supposed to be here. Get out." It would be <laughs> funny if I find you, myself back in the future. Yeah. If you like mastered that. the time travel technology, you got back to see Jesus. You go to speak to him in English. He speaks to you in Aramaic. You're like, son of a gun, this did not work out the way yeah, I thought yeah, it was going to yeah, work yeah. out. He hey. would do it on purpose, though, because he can't tell you. <laughs> hey, before we do Mandela Effect, have you guys heard the story about the pilot Bruce Gernon and the Bermuda Triangle and the time vortex mm -hmm. he supposedly mm -hmm. went through? Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and he was flying this plane, and, yeah. and it was like a spinning vortex. Tell the story. I remember seeing it on TV. Yeah, so this is in the... This is in 1970, so he's flying his small airplane through the area of the Bermuda Triangle. He said it was a clear blue day, and then he said all of a sudden this wall of clouds just appeared in front of him, and a vortex opened up in him. And he said it happened so suddenly there was no way he could go any other way. And he said through the vortex he could see blue sky. So he thought, son of a gun, I'm just going to go for this. So he gets through it, and suddenly he's almost to where he needs to land. And he lands... And the flight controllers have no idea how he got there as quickly as he did. And he did the math, and he figured out that he got about 250 miles in only 47 minutes, which was well beyond the capacity of what that particular airplane could do. Mm -hmm. So some people ask, or even back to Polites with the disappearances, mm -hmm. what if there's time vortexes that open up here and there on mm -hmm. Earth, mm -hmm. and, and those types of things happen? Uh, real quick, I, I don't remember the guy's name, so I don't know all the details. There's an interesting case with the whole Vortex thing. It was a Scottish pilot in the 30s. Uh, he was like a colonel or whatever. He was flying, and he was like going back to where his base was. And he looked down, and he saw like these weird planes that he had never seen before. Uh, and he saw that like all the grounds crew were in yellow uh, like jumpsuits or whatever. He's like, well, that's not the colors of my army. Yeah. Like, I'm going do whatever. Uh, and so he, uh, I mean, supposedly through reports, he... Got on the radio, couldn't get anyone on radio, thought it was kind of weird, so he just kind of flew around for a little bit more, thought maybe made it uh, air, flew so far in the other direction, and then he got started getting radio contact again, and they're like, now nah, you're on the right heading, and when he came back to the heading, it was his normal 
air base. And then the part that was interesting about it is the uh, Scottish airfield. Uh, it was in the 30s during World War II. They changed all their colors to yellow as far as the things. And like he claims that the planes he saw were like the Spitfires mm. and planes that wow. didn't exist at yeah. the time. I mean, yeah, just his story, but it's just kind of an interesting little side thing mm. with that kind of stuff. So. That is neat about two different timelines. Uh, like, like, there's been a number of stories of people that will see other people in colonial garb. Yeah. And yeah. at first they think they're going to like a costume ball, then they figure out that ghosts and stuff. Yeah, like oh, that. Gosh, absolutely. Heard, you know, yeah. They see that, you absolutely. Know? show us some of the things that yeah, people. Made, no. that, okay, uh, sure. So, as Jay said, people believe two different theories on Nelson Mandela. Officially, he was a free man and died at the ripe old age of 95, but a lot of people say, no, that's impossible. I remember him dying in prison in South Africa. I saw the funeral on TV. So here are some examples. Um, here we have Oscar Mayer and Oscar Mayer for hot dogs. So basically, we'll give the audience a couple seconds to figure out which one is correct. Fred, do you want, why don't you be our litmus test, Fred, for all these? Which spelling, Fred, of Oscar Mayer is correct? The M-E-Y-E-R or M-A-Y-E-R? M-E. Incorrect, M-A-Y. Mm -hmm. All right. Fred, how does Queen's We Are the Champions end? Does it end just with We Are the Champions, then it tails off? Or at the end, does Freddie Mercury say, Of oh, the world? Of oh, the world. Incorrect. It was the other way. And I show this one to students, and they freak out. They say, no way is that possible. But then when you listen to the song, he actually says, Of the world, at least in our timeline now, towards the middle of the song. All right, Uncle Moneybags from Monopoly. Which is correct, Fred? Does he have the monocle or not have the monocle? No. No. You're correct on that one. Good. No See, more. I would, I would have said he did. Uh, so would I. Yeah, I know. Now, this one only a younger generation would get. This is Pikachu from Pokemon. And I'll ask the kids. They're passionate about it. But this is one he found online. And his tail does not have a black stripe. How about this one? Chick-fil-A. Which is the correct way to spell chick? Is it C-H-I-C? C-H-I-C. Incorrect. It's spelled yeah, the regular way. Me too. That's what I, that's what yeah. I remembered. It as the and I would have said, I would have said, I don't know how it's spelled, but I know it's spelled some weird way, not the normal way, but nope. All right, Fruit Loops. How is the popular breakfast cereal? Is the first word F R U I T or is it F R O O T? Fruit. Oh, F R U I T. Incorrect. It's F R O O T. Don't fill in like Because you're older. Yeah. You, you saw the original you saw version. The original. <laughs> <laughs> Now this one, when I saw it, I refused to believe it, and I called my mom so that I could dig out my old Berenstain Bears books. So how is Berenstain spelled? Is it S-T-A-I-N or S-T-E-I-N? I have no idea. Right. I don't know what that is. Do you remember these books? Yeah, I do remember that. All right. Yeah. Well, that one, that's a pretty popular one. It's actually S-T-A-I-N. So that's that's basically the Mandela yeah. effect. So yeah, yeah there's a, there's even cool. some other ones that I've shared with like one of my kids asked me about it was. Uh, like there's a popular show on HBO, uh, and you know, most people say it's called Sex in the City, but it was called Sex and the City. Mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. much everybody mm -hmm. remembers it as Sex in the City. Yeah. Uh, the the famous line in Star Empire Strikes Back, uh, you know, Luke, I am your father. Well, that's not really what he says. He says, "No, search yourself. I am your father." He never actually says, "Luke, I am your father." And just those, those are some of the ones that are popping in my head of ones that have been explained mm. before that people think are just kind of strange that they totally remember it one way. And it's the same thing. There's a phenomenon. I, I listened to a podcast, group podcast, what it was, but it was along the same ideas. And the it's kind of like the, where you just you know the alive or dead. Where like there's certain like celebrities you're. You swear, oh no, he died. But yeah. then you find out, like, no, they're still yeah. alive. Yeah, I mean, and that sort of thing. So right. it makes you wonder how much is faulty memory or how much is something kind of. Yeah, I just thought yeah. of something. In, in that last book I published, I give a lot of different scenarios, right? One of the things I talk about time travel just a little bit, but uh, what I think the plan would be from, let's say, a, a, an occult standpoint, if you could time travel, you would go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls mm -hmm. and replace them with a totally different version that discredits the whole Jesus story. Whoa, now think oh, about yeah. that, that the oh, wow. impact yeah, of yeah. that on the world. That's why this stuff's dangerous, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or, or like that. the show Timeless, they, they go back, mm -hmm. there's one who goes back to assassinate these famous people, and another one that keeps trying to stop them. It's really a good show, oh, and how it changes the whole future. Hey, there's a new phenomenon, and I don't know if this relates or a lot, but it made me think of it. Do you guys remember like a year or two ago on social media, 
there was that picture of the dress and people freaked out because some people thought it was yellow yeah. and some people thought it was purple. Mm -hmm. And then just last week, what was that thing? Was it Yanni versus... Yeti. Yeah, uh, it was It was mm -hmm. that sound online and mm -hmm. half the people heard it one way and half the people heard it another way. So I don't know if it relates or a lot, but sometimes I think maybe it's just a question of our perception. Maybe some people see the world a certain way some people see it a different way, and both people are right. That's interesting. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That, was, that was good. Cool. Very good. Thank right. you. And we will have you. We need to get you at the Philly conference to speak. You did Pittsburgh, right? Correct. Yeah, we got to get you next year. 2019, cool. you'll be speaking right. in Philly. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. That's all right. That's our episode.